Good morning everyone and welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. My name is Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes and um, I'm here this morning to give you a demonstration on how to colour chocolate and also how to make some Halloween lollies. So I'm going to show you how to make some Halloween lollies using some chocolate transfer sheets and I'm also going to show you how to paint some. So I'm giving you this full-on activity that you're going to be able to do from your home which will be very nice won't it. So Halloween might be a little bit different this year and maybe you're looking for some different things to do if you do have kids at home or grandchildren um, I'm hoping this morning that I'm going to be able to show you some different things that you can get involved with quite simple things as well I don't believe in making anything too complicated I like to keep everything as simple as possible um, for my own benefit as much as yours especially when you're doing it live you see so when you're doing these things live you don't want it to be too complicated <laughs> just like to keep it nice and straightforward um, so the idea this morning is I've had some of you have seen me before on Sugar and Crumbs. We don't broadcast out from Sugar and Crumbs. I do it from my own unit here in Longwick. Um, but I'm on here regularly, usually on here at half past 11 on a Thursday morning. I am going to be moving to Tuesday evenings coming up in October right through to Christmas. I've got loads and loads of ideas lined up for you. Lots of different things. Lots of things that I tend to do for those of you that haven't seen me before is I teach online cake painting and I do an awful lot of chocolate work and that's kind of the two things that I tend to do on here. I do buttercream as well sometimes, you know. <laughs> if you go to my Instagram page, it's full of buttercream. So if anybody is interested in particularly flowers, I do love the old flowers buttercream. Carol does a lovely course doing um, buttercream flower piping I believe online which is very popular and I'd say to you if you haven't done it then get involved because buttercream piping is lovely it's one of my favorite things I say go and have a look so over the weeks that I've been on here uh, started back in March a lot uh, one question that keeps coming up all the time is how do I color chocolate so there are several different ways that you can do it and today I'm going to show you um, just one of the ways I'm just going to take this as we know who I am now. Um, I'm going to show you one of the ways that I do it, but over the next few weeks, so as I say, I'm going to be on October, November and December on this channel. Um, I'm going to show you some different ways of doing it so that you can have a go and see which way you like. So this is the way I do it, um, but sometimes I do it other ways as well, just to confuse everyone. It's just a little bit like that, isn't it? It's just kind of what works really. So this morning I'm going to be showing you how to temper chocolate. I'm going, which is very important, and if you don't know what that is, you need to watch very carefully. I'm going to be showing you how to colour it, and then I'm going to be showing you how to make lollies. I'm looking around, you see, because I forget sometimes what I'm actually here to do. So I'm just have a quick scan of what I put out. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to make lollies, and I'm going to be showing you how to paint them as well. So I'm going to show you lots and lots of different things that you can do. Either, well, these are Halloween themed. You don't have to be Halloween themed. They can be anything themed but these ones today are particularly Halloween themes. Get involved if you want to ask me any questions during the demonstration. I will read my comments as I go as best I possibly can. If I miss anything or I don't answer your question, feel, please feel free to message me at the end either via my Instagram page, there it is, Tracy Man Cakes, that's me, or via Facebook, which looks remarkably similar. <laughs> so Tracy Man Cakes, so if you do want to ask me a question, then please feel free afterwards. Right, uh, so before we get started, one of the things that I uh, do a lot of is online cake painting and we do have a Halloween project out at the moment, which I have got in front of me here and I'm just going to change cameras so you can see it. So this is my Halloween offering for this year. So if anybody out there would like to get involved in having a go at cake painting, then this is the project for you. I know some of you have already bought it because I recognise some of your names that are coming up on the screen now, which is actually quite lovely because I've been here a long time now. So I do recognise a lot of the names that come up but this is the little chap that I've got for Halloween this year um, very adaptable so if you want to have a go at just maybe even painting the teddy or just the pumpkin it is very very adaptable and it's on a pre-recorded lesson and it's all step by step so if you haven't done any cake painting before you can't draw you can't paint you can't do any of that this is for you okay so don't miss out on this it is available at the moment it's 15 pounds and it's on the website I'm just going to pop the website address back up again so you don't book this through sugar and crumbs you go to my website to book this go on to the online cake painting school 
and in there you will find this lesson is available. As soon as you've booked onto it, I will send you a link and then you just follow the link through to the website. If you are already one of my students, there have been a few of you um, and you've bought the course, all you do is log back into the Teachable site that you did before and you will find the lesson waiting for you. So you won't necessarily get another email, uh, the lesson just gets added to your area. So if you are already one of my Kate Painting students, then it will just be added on. If you are not one of my students, you will get a link that will take you through for you to enrol and join that way. But if you get any problems with signing in or anything like that, just get in touch with me. I'm more than happy to help you. Um, it, don't feel silly or anything like that, because you know it can be a little bit complicated sometimes with tech stuff. So if you do want to get involved, then do just give me, uh, just drop me a message and I'll more than happily point you in the right direction. So for 15 pounds, this lesson here is yours forever. You can do it as many times as you like, watch it as many times as you like and hopefully pick up lots and lots of tips that you can then apply to your own work and I know I've been persuading more and more of you to start painting and actually um, the results have been amazing and I am very a proud teacher as much as I'm you know I do all these things and I think gosh I hope this all works and then to get some amazing feedback which I have had about my courses through everybody at um, on sugar and crumbs then you know I am delighted I'm going to come back on screen again just in case you forget what I look like <laughs> don't see much of me actually when I'm doing my painting it's normally just my voice um, but yes for those people that have got involved with the paint painting lessons thank you thank you for one trusting me that I can teach you to paint because so many of you have said I can't paint can't draw good luck Tracy and you've all done really really well but also for the lovely lovely comments that I get back and the very very supportive Facebook groups that we we do have for cake painting um, that are around a lot of these courses particularly at the moment the beginners cocoa butter cake painting group they are a lovely lovely group and they're all doing amazingly well and now showing me some of the other things that they are doing which is fantastic and I'm looking at this going this is amazing I'm so pleased that they've been able to go further and do more than um, than just follow the classes the idea is I, I give you the, the, the skills and the tools and the equipment for you to be able to follow the classes and then you can go and do your own thing it's just like learning to ice a cake or make a flower and then applying your own creative side to it so um, I hope that some of you will feel inclined to have a go at cake painting, uh, especially now the winter nights are, are drawing in and perhaps we're all staying at home a little bit more than, than we would like. Um, this is a lovely relaxing thing to do, especially if you're, you know, it is quite stressful at the moment. If you want the ultimate hobby not to be stressed, painting is it. It is so relaxing and so lovely. And as I say, please don't be put off if you cannot paint or draw. Those are things you do not need to worry about. Um, you'll be absolutely fine. I'm reading some of the comments on here. Um, just covered my boards for se good, lovely. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> or getting ready to pair. Julie, um, the flower course with the dog um, can, now let's see, dog with flowers, um, that's the live one I think. Just drop me a little message at the end and I'll follow that one up for you um, and I can sort that out for you. So lovely to see a lot of you here this morning. I am going to be doing chocolate and I am going to be doing painting today. So it's, I might be here a while this morning. So I hope that's okay. If you're watching it because it's pre-recorded and you've come back and watched it later on, you're very welcome. And as I say, do tune in to all the demonstrations on Children and Crumbs because it is a fantastic site. And um, I know a lot of you are getting involved in lots of Bake Off and things at the moment. And why not? Isn't it amazing? I'm loving it. It's absolutely fantastic. And um, when I start doing my demonstration, uh, which are going to be Tuesdays um, starting in October Tuesday evenings I will guarantee I will guarantee here that I'm going to start a little bit earlier that we will be ready for the bake-off so my demonstrations are going to be starting at eight they're going to be starting at half past six to give me and you the opportunity to get ready for the bake-off so there will be a double whammy on a Tuesday night you'll not only get a sugar and crumb demonstration but you'll also get the bake-off so you, it's a winner isn't it really so there you go 
Right, so let's have a look at this morning and let's see how we're going to get on. So we're going to be uh, tempering and colouring chocolate. So for those of you that haven't watched me before, we do use Belgian chocolate on here. We use a brand called Calabao. This is what it looks like. There you go, that's Calabao chocolate. Um, we have lots of questions about um, using things like uh, different types of Belgian chocolate or candy melts or some cheaper chocolate. I honestly would say to you, really really think hard about what you're going to do because for the little bit of extra cost there is towards that belgium chocolate the results will be so much better than trying to do it really cheaply so um, i would strongly recommend for good first time results that you do use a quality belgium chocolate and as i say calabao is a particularly good one and you will find it in lots and lots of places um, and it is really really excellent i'm reading this do you sell uh, I'm, I'm reading and uh, do you know what I'm going to have to confess something about my glasses this morning. I went for an optician's appointment this morning and when I got there, I wasn't down on the list. So I'm not very happy. <laughs> so I'm still struggling to see some of my comments. So do bear with me. Um, and I'm going tomorrow. So I had to book a different place tomorrow, but I wasn't very happy this morning because I, I was really looking forward to my optician's appointment. I could, I, I never know whether it's my eyesight or just the sheer amount of icing sugar and grease that's on my glasses from my work. But anyway, um, <laughs> I do apologise. I will do everything I can to read as much as I can. But if I am struggling, then I will come back to you on that. So let's start with the white chocolate. And in order to do this, you're going to need a microwave, which is behind me here. Um, you can do this over a stove. You can do it over sort of, when I mean a stove, I mean a hob. So boiling water with a glass bowl on here. But this method that I've got works in the microwave. It's easy, it's straightforward, and you will find it much, much easier to get on with than you will by doing uh, a different method. But it's up to you, I'm gonna show you it. I know a lot of you have had success now from doing it this way. Loads of people do it this way um, and it is it's just absolutely lovely so I'm going to show you that in a minute but before we start let's just have a little look at what we're doing in terms of uh, the demo this morning so I'm going to temper my chocolate then I'm going to color it then I'm going to pipe it onto making some lollies and then I'm going to put those in the fridge now while those ones are in the fridge I'm then going to show you how I've painted some designs onto some of these lollies because I've made some earlier yesterday and then we'll get the other ones out at the end and you can have a look at them and see how they've set okay so I hope that's a, a, a little rundown of how long we're going to be this morning quite a long time I'll speed through it as best I can um, so we're going to be using um, transfer sheets for those of you that have not seen those before these are the Halloween transfer sheets now I'll push, actually I'll show you under this camera here let me get rid of my halloween you go over there right so this is one called uh funny pumpkins and this one is called spiders i don't have very many of them they are really really difficult to get hold of so i have a very limited supply of them um, and that's why they're on the website um, with a bit of chocolate because they are so difficult to get hold of um, if I have any left, I will start splitting them off so that they're on their own. But at the moment, they are all together for um, with lollipop sticks so that you're able to do your lollies as well. So transfer sheets are acetate sheets. So food grade acetate that you can then melt chocolate, pour onto them, leave them to set in the fridge, bring them back out and then peel them off. And you will find that they are um fixed the pattern is fixed onto the lolly so they are really really good loads and loads of fun very different and um you can impress everyone with these because they're so wowed by the fact that you can do this it's fantastic now halloween is a very short space of time i know we're going to be doing a few demos on halloween leading up to it perhaps a few more than normal because we're all a, a little bit at home but um christmas is coming and we have a massive range of these uh, transfer sheets in uh, if you can't choose there's an assorted pack which i'm more than happy to pick for you um, but if you want to pick your own sheets then you can go through and see what you want but they are they again anything with anything connected with transfer sheets once they're sold out they are sold out they don't come back in again so i've got a huge number of in them in now so if you are interested in making lollies so christmas lollies or anything connected with these sheets then do have a look at my website today it's very important because they will not last by the time i get towards christmas i'll probably have nothing left <laughs> it's the same every year it's just the way they are they come from abroad and the supply chain is obviously a tiny bit more difficult at the moment
moment so just please bear that in mind so they're not something that we get very quickly they do take quite a period of time to come in so let's move on to what we're going to do this morning so we're going to start this tempering process now someone's put up glass bowl not plastic now when you do this in the microwave it is a plastic bowl when you do this in um, over the hob it is a glass bowl so this is why the method that's on the hob is very different to the method in the microwave now the method on the hob is called the seeding method that's s-e-e-d-i-n-g and if you go into youtube put in seeding method chocolate you will see a different demonstration and what i recommend is that you go and do that i don't have a hob in here so i can't show you but do have a look and see what's on there um, i'm going to show you my method which is the plastic bowl now it has to be plastic because glass retains heat and we're going to control the temperature of the chocolate so that we get to the point where um, it's going to be tempered and we're going to be able to use it. Um, I've also got a plastic spatula in here, which most people normally say your spatula is in the microwave. I know because I normally leave it in there. So I don't like leaving it all over the place because one, I don't have a lot of space to leave it anyway. But secondly, I just prefer it to be in there so I don't lose it, which is very, very possible with me at the moment. So um, at least I know exactly where it is. So my microwave behind me is, I think it's an 800 actually or an 850. Um, not a hundred percent sure not that important because what we're going to be doing is a timing method so we're going to follow this in a time thing so we're going to follow this very exactly here you can't cheat there's no no cheating involved with this if you cheat it doesn't work so and I'll tell you the cheating points as we go but the very first thing is no matter how much chocolate is in here um, it's the same method okay so it doesn't matter if it's 200 grams or a kilo it's exactly the same method all right now these are buttons i don't know why i keep doing that i've got two cameras on today that's what they look like so they are little callets or buttons okay i'm going to turn back again and i'm just going to put this whoop, into the microwave so full power 30 seconds that's the first point or well, that's where we're going to start now if anybody buys um, transfer sheets off me there is a sheet that comes with it and it does tell you all of this on there if you can't remember go to the YouTube channel and you will find a short video on there that tells you how to do it as well or you can watch this video again in your spare time I'm sure it's fine or any of my chocolate videos that I've been doing on here since back in March You've, I've been tempering and doing this over and over again you see I don't mind it's absolutely fine i'm just drumming in the fact you can't cheat you see <laughs> so once it's gone through um a, a cycle of 30 seconds there's no change nothing to show you we're going to put it back in again and then you're going to do this in 10 second cycles so every 10 seconds i'm going to stop the microwave that's why i've got my eye on it and i'm going to remove it and I'm going to stir it so there won't be a lot of change for quite a period of time it will actually look exactly the same very nothing to see at all it's one of those things that all of a sudden it goes and then you go I've got it I understand now I know what it's doing now I don't own a chocolate thermometer uh, nor do I know what temperature I'm aiming for the best way to do this is visually so um, I find by looking at what I'm doing I can then get the best results if I start standing there with a, a thermometer and a probe and waiting and thinking oh, okay any minute now I then end up with a few problems so I find it much easier just to do it visually I think it's much better everybody cheats at the 10 second stage everybody so don't cheat stick to your 10 seconds it's very very important don't add a few extra seconds in there just because you think it will help speed up the demonstration because uh, speed up the demonstration speed up your work because what happens is all you're doing is creating a hot spot the aim of this is to take the chocolate up slowly until it gets to a point where it's melted so we don't want to be doing uh, we don't want to race the temperature up we need to just let it climb very slowly so yes it does feel a tiny bit frustrating at times but it will go there's still not a huge amount of change at the moment it's just starting to just starting to clump together so it's starting to change um, but every 10 seconds is you can't cheat and also you can't actually do much in 10 seconds I've tried <laughs> 
I think I ran across to the other side of the kitchen to grab some cling film and then ran back again. That was about it. So you really can't um, do very much. I'm just going to change camera so you can see what's going on. So that's where we are at the moment. So there's not a huge amount going on. You can see it's starting to melt. And I've probably done about, what, five or six of those 10 seconds. Stirring is as important as the temperature. So as you get towards the end of this, the temperature becomes less important and the stirring becomes more important. So you need to keep stirring it. So I know now roughly what to say in 10 seconds, don't I? <laughs> You need to check it, Tracy. Right, back in again. That's okay, I've got that set. It's gonna bleep now at the end, so I know I don't have to watch that one too much. Um, so that's what we're doing here. So I don't have a thermometer, you don't need a thermometer. There's just no way that, um, it just hinders you more than anything else. If you wanna know what the exact temperatures are, again, go onto Google, go onto YouTube, and you will find the exact temperature, temperatures. I had to get my teeth in this morning on there and um, that will help you. Let me put this back under here so you can see what's going on. So that's what we are at the moment. So we're almost there. Now we can't do anything with that. There's no sort of consistency with that. But we're not far off it now. We're getting to the end of the cycle now. Um, so we are gonna be able to do our work with it. And as we get towards the end of the cycle as well, you might wanna shorten the amount of time that it's been melted. So, and it's amazing actually at the end, these 10 seconds that like took forever suddenly become quite, uh, suddenly you can see the chocolate melting really, really quickly. Now, when you use the spatula, really get in all the chocolate. I hope I've done enough here. I'm looking at this thinking, I wonder if I've done enough chocolate. Oh God, the lollies might be quite small this morning, but well, that's okay. So I still can't do much with this at the moment. It is melting, but I am gonna need another 10 seconds in there. Pop that back in again. Fingers crossed. I did do everything in advance, so that's okay. <laughs> right, so let's have a look and see where we are. The worst thing I can do, you see, is mess this up live. <laughs> I will laugh about it, but if nothing works, it's pretty disastrous. So I am <laughs> I'm watching this like a hawk, really. Okay, almost there, almost there. I'm going to show you exactly what you're looking for in a minute. Now I'm just going to put this in for five seconds now because I am nearly there. I think that's it. That'll be it. Pretty much. I'm having a good stir and then I'll show you on the camera. So you're not missing anything, don't worry. <laughs> right. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. Right, there you go. That's what it looks like when it's tempered. So what it has is this consistency of double cream so when you pour it can you see it leaves a bit of a trail so when you pour uh, if you pour the chocolate like this and it's running really quickly a bit like water what that means is you've actually um, overheated it can you see it's leaving this lovely trail probably could do with a, one more quick burst but we're near enough there i don't really want to take it down too much further but you can see it's le leaving a bit of a trail. Well, I'll give it two more seconds in the microwave just because. Okay, and that will be it, definitely. Right, so that's the white chocolate. Now, we've, I've decided today that we're going to make it orange. So you can buy things like candy melts and stuff, but they are not really chocolate. Um, they're more sort of sugary based. So this is white Belgium chocolate and we're going to make it orange. So I do it separately. I have myself a small bowl and what I do is I take a tablespoon out, literally a tablespoon. I've got black dusting colour everywhere. This stuff just goes everywhere. Now I'm just going to pop my other bowl next to me. So that's what I've put there and I'm going to use a dust. I'm going to use this one which is called Sunset Orange. Okay and all I'm going to do is just take some of this. I'm going to pop this into my chocolate. Now I'm gonna put quite a lot in because this is gonna be the concentrated version that's then going to dye the rest of my chocolate. And I'm gonna take my spatula and I'm gonna really, really mix this, hopefully not shaking the camera too much in the process. Now, why am I doing it like this? The reason I'm doing it like this with a spatula is because dusts have this horrible habit of creating lumps. 
So when you mix a bit of colour, if you do it in a small container with a spatula, not a spoon, it has to be a spatula because you're flattening it off, you can get rid of the majority of all the lumps and the colours that are in there so that when you transfer this into the bigger amount, you don't then have a problem with lots and lots of little specks of dust all over the place. You can see that is going in quite nicely. So if I pour this into here, now this is not going to be as orange as I would like. This is like stage one. Okay, so I'm now gonna mix the rest of that in. As I say, there are other ways of doing this. This is just one way. Now what I've got here is actually a really lovely like peachy colour because don't forget when you do colour chocolate it starts on a different base colour. So it's um, basically what this is, I'm trying to read some of these comments at the same time. So uh, chocolate's yellow or on the yellow scale so you are better off thinking about your colours to start with because if you, we've added orange to this we've now got peach, we're going to increase that colour again. So I'm going to just take another little bit out and I'm going to put some more dust in. Now I know what people are going to be saying, how much dust are you using? Now I did this yesterday with my other ones and I made some very bright orange ones yesterday and I used, I did the same number of lollies and I hardly used any dust. I used about, gosh, about a fifth of this little tube, tiny amount. Um, and the tubes aren't that expensive either. So they're quite good value, I think. I noticed people are putting up comments about colour mill. Now I've got colour mill in, but I haven't actually used it yet to be able to tell you what it is and how it works, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out for you and see the difference. But I've always done it this way. I think it's quite successful for me um, for something like this type of thing. So there we go, we've mixed a bit more. Give it a good old right let's pop that back in there now the chocolate's starting to get a tiny bit stiff so i'm just going to pop this in the microwave just for five seconds and have a very look, quick look at your questions yeah you can use color mill but not everyone has color mill but lots of people have these dusting colors um, and that's why I've used them because this was the way we used to do it before colour mill was invented. So this is the way. Now you don't use things like, um, oh, what was I going to say? Those gel colours. Don't use gel colours. Gel colours are water-based. The minute you put them in with chocolate, then you have a problem. Colour mill is oil-based and so therefore you don't have the same issue. There we go. I'm just going to give it 10 more seconds in the microwave it's because I've left it to stand and that's the other thing as well when you're mixing colour in you will need to go back and just reheat it again because you've been waiting around um, to mix your colour it's a bit of a fine line so you will there you go it's moving again now so you will need to go back and just apply some more heat to it it's just the time spent waiting whilst you're mixing your colour but it's a beautiful colour a very nice colour. I'm very happy with this. So there you go, there's your consistency there. A few more seconds in the microwave and then we'll be good to go. And then we can start doing our lollies. There we go. And I want them to flow a bit. There we go. Right. One more mix. And then we're going to pop this into a piping bag. Now I'm just going to move that out of the way because my camera is marginally, well it's quite tall, this bowl, trying to get this in. So I will show you what I've done. I'll put that back in there. So I've just used this to hold my piping bag in like so. It's just easier than me trying to do it with my hands. So we're going to do the plain ones first. Now where's my scissors? Oh no, Tracy man, what have you done with your scissors? I tried to be, oh there they are. I knew I'd put them out somewhere. <laughs> I've had a few demos where I've not done that. So this is just a piece of plain acetate, food grade acetate. If you've bought transfer sheets before, you can just don't throw them away, turn them over and use the other side. And you can make plain lollies that you can then paint. So 
But all you do for making lollies is just take your bag, hold it up like so. I'm going to just do a couple and just force the chocolate out like that. Take your lollipop sticks, am I still on screen? Yes I am. And then press them down, twist, and then take them over, drop them. That's the best bit. <laughs> okay, they're going to go off to the fridge, so let's get rid of those. Right, just put that down a second. And then we'll do the transfers. So you can make these as big or as small as you want, that's entirely up to you. So if you want to do big lollies, you can do big lollies. If you want to do small lollies, you can do small lollies. Now with transfers, you need to find the side that feels the rough side. This one's a bit more obvious, but this one you need to feel it, otherwise you're going to end up with no pattern at all. Let's see where I am. So hold it still, squeeze out the chocolate. I have to do a few here because my children will be trying to get this won't they even if my children are 20 years old and 24 they still want Halloween lollies um, let's put that one in there and then this one in here and then all you're going to do again drop it and that spreads it okay nearly there one more for luck right done didn't expect that did you <laughs> right let's just pop these in the fridge Right, there we go. And then any chocolate that's left over. So this is chocolate that I finished with yesterday uh, when I did my, um, my trial set of lollies. And it's just in this little bowl here. Same as what I've just done. It's dried and I've taken it out and I can now remelt that. So you can just use that as is like that. Do I sell plain acetate sheets? I don't, but I'm thinking about it. Um, because I don't at the moment, don't use greaseproof paper. That's the only thing I would say not to use because with greaseproof paper, it gives you a really dull finish. Um, so you wanna be using um, food grade acetate, cellophane's quite good. Anything, as long as it's food grade, it will be fine. Um, so that's basically what you need to do there. So any leftover chocolate that you have, now we've had lots of discussions about leftover chocolate in this group. <laughs> And people saying they're eating it and things like that um you just put it into your little pot and it will reset and then you can tip it out and you can temper or melt it again the only thing is it won't tolerate you doing it over and over and over again it will tolerate you doing it two or three times but it won't tolerate you doing it lots and lots uh can you do the pictures on both sides um you can do the pictures on both sides if you want to you would put your lollies down and put another sheet straight over the top while they're still wet so if you want to do that yes you can um but it's entirely up to you you will obviously go through double the number of sheets if you are doing that um but yes you, you as long as you cut a strip out and you pop it on while it's still wet there's no reason why you can't do that as well right but we're going to paint the chocolate so we've had this question come up loads can i paint on chocolate how do i paint on chocolate and amazingly enough it is with cocoa butter which is one of my expert fields here so i'm going to show you how to do some cocoa butter painting with um the lolly so hopefully all being well now what i've done is i've got lollies that are in the fridge now the ones that are um, I did yesterday are these ones here because when you're going to paint a plain lolly, so there's my plain lolly from yesterday, I'm going to paint these now. If I was to paint the ones that are in the fridge, we would have to wait about half an hour and uh, because what we need them to do is we need them to come back up to room temperature um, and it's really important it comes back up to room temperature because otherwise when you're trying to apply the paint, it's going to set really quickly because it's going to feel the heat of the cocoa butter onto the lolly and immediately set which means that you can't get a decent coverage on it or actually paint anything worthwhile um, you're just going to find it's all sliding about all over the place so you do need to do these at room temperature so that is what I have got to have done these in advance um, so let me get myself my board now my boards are in there aren't they so we've got that so let's talk about what we're going to paint with so you can people have said in the past i've painted chocolate i've done it with um vodka and or clear alcohol and dusting colors or they've tried to do it with gels and paste the, there is only one thing that fixes 
um, painting to chocolate and that is cocoa butter there isn't anything else that does it as well as that now um, you are going to find that it will fix it will dry it will look great but with anything else if you start touching it and doing this then it will come off so it's not completely infallible there will be moments where you can't do that too much so um, it looks great it looks lovely but please be aware that uh, a certain amount of um you know oh doesn't that look nice it will eventually come off so just be careful it's, it's just heat reactive but it is the most reliable way of being able to paint something onto chocolate and i have said in the past on here if you wanted to have a go at painting on chocolate you know don't make you don't necessarily have to make something you could just go to um tesco's or any other supermarket and just buy a bar of chocolate one of the plain ones turn it over and use the back and you could just have a go at painting something on there it's, it's quite you know it's nice and then you then you can eat it can't you? you can eat the evidence so if you don't like it then um it's fine um my lollies are going to be in the fridge for approximately 15 to 20 minutes lollies are quite quick actually some other things that we do with chocolate do take a little bit longer um but this one is literally just a case of um, straightforward 15 minutes approximately which is probably about the right time for when these are going to be coming out anyway um, but what I'm saying is the plain ones when they come out if you then want to paint them which is what I'm going to do in a minute you would need to let them come back up to room temperature you need them to warm up again otherwise they're going to be really really difficult for you to paint so that's really really important information so if you take anything from this don't try and paint lollies when they come straight out of the fridge or anything that's just come straight out of the fridge because otherwise you're going to find it really difficult so um cocoa butter which is what we use looks like this it is little white buttons um, that we're going to be using to melt and we're going to be mixing them with the dusting colors which is that what we use to do the coloring of the chocolate so we use these didn't we so if you've done cakes before or you are into cake decorating you do lots of sugar flowers you've probably got lots of these anyway for anybody out there that's my currently my cocoa butter um, cake painting people you'll have loads of these now <laughs> this is not going to be a problem you're going to have them everywhere um, I've used sunset orange for this particular one today purely because I wanted to do kind of a pumpkin so I thought right I'm going to do orange so that's fine as the weeks go on leading up to Christmas I am going to be doing different um, colors and things on some of the other transfers so you could kind of see how to do it and also between us all we can have a look at coloring and various things how far in advance can you make the lollies right you can make the lollies um are quite aware if you were doing them for halloween today that would be fine you just need to put them when you finish them put them in a uh, tupperware container put the lid on them and don't store them in the fridge just store them at room temperature they're the same as um, ordinary chocolate if you can wrap them in a, in a little bag or something if you want to do that or as i say just keep them away from anything that smells any light and any heat because those are the three things that chocolate really really hate they hate light they hate heat <laughs> and and they will pick up smell um, but other than that they should be fine and don't store anything in the fridge um, right what else have we got do you have to cut the lollies off the transfers no they're going to lift off and I'm going to show you that so if you stay tuned or you come back I will show you if you watch this at a later date I will show you exactly what's going to happen so by the end of the lesson I will show you the transfers coming off and then you'll be able to understand it a bit better sometimes when someone's showing you something you think yeah yeah I've got it I've got it and then you sort of think well no I haven't at all so I'm one of these visual learners I like to see things being done rather than being learning out of a book I need to actually see it. so hopefully as i say this will um, help so going back to the cocoa butter cocoa butter is a product that needs to be melted so we have two different ways of doing that for those of you that have done lots of um uh, cocoa butter painting with me we use two systems you can either use a glass bowl just a shallow glass bowl filled with boiling water and then a paint palette or a china plate on top so hopefully it looked like that. So there's your glass bowl here. This is my glass bowl. And then my boiling water's in there. And this will get hot, which is the purpose of what we need it to do. And then we will be able to melt the cocoa butter and then we will be able to paint with it. So that's the system that we can use. So if you're at home and you want to have a go, but you don't have all the other things that I've got here, um, you can do it that way. Now, I do it a slightly different way. I've got one of these, which is a chrome food warmer, which usually sets most people off every time I mention this thing. Um, it's a chrome food warmer with a tea light in the middle. Um, and that's what I use. So I light my candle, which is my heat source. And then I put on here my metal paint palette, which is also going to keep my heat involved. That heats up and then the cocoa butter stays hot. 
now or stays melted. I like this method purely because I don't have to keep leaping up and down and um, melting, um, boiling my water because you have to replace the water every 20 minutes if you use the other method. I just quite like this. I don't sell them. Um, Carol doesn't sell them. They are on Amazon. So if you go onto Amazon and you put in the words Chrome Food Warmer, if there's any left, because I've been talking about it for weeks, uh, if not months, um, that's where you'll find them. And they're roughly about £10. You only need one. And once you've got it, that's it. Um, and that's the end of it. Someone's just said, do you leave leftover cocoa butter in the dish for the next for next time? Um, yes, you can do. There's no reason why you can't do that. I mean, you can actually finish... Uh, if you've got one of these and it's um, completed, I tend to find at the end of my project. So if I've actually finished, um, I do need to clean it all down because all the colours have all got all mixed up together and then it looks a bit of a mess. Um, but if you are, um, let's say your mid project and you go off to do something and then you come back and you want to carry on, then, yeah, there's no reason why you can't just remove the heat and then you can go off and uh, do whatever it is you need to do and then come back and relight it and the cocoa butter will then reset. I'm looking around to see if I've actually got one over there. Let me get this one. So I'm in the middle of painting a project at the moment. I'm in the middle of painting another class. Let me just put this onto camera. So this is um, the palette that I'm using at the moment. So this is cocoa butter here that I've had the... Um, I've removed the heat and therefore that's what it looks like when it resets. So you're going to see what it looks like in a minute when I'm actually melting it, but that's what it looks like when it's set. So um, once I switch it all back on again, it will then um, melt back down again, but that's a different palette for a lesson. You see, I can't use that one, otherwise I'm going to get in a muddle. <laughs> Got to keep that one separate because I'm recording at the moment. And if I if I um, go off and set that one off, then I really will be uh, confused. Right. So we're going to get the Chrome Food Warmer going. So all we're going to do is light it. I'm going to put back on camera. And I'm just going to light that. Pop my metal paint palette on. Now there's a bit of white dust on there already. I've put that on there because I've got mine in a bag and um, whenever I go to use it, I'm gonna just turn this around. I always throw it everywhere live, so I decide in the end that I will put the white on in advance, it's much better for me. So the cocoa butter that we have just goes on. Do I never know why I've just done that, but I'll put those two there. So I'm gonna put two lots on. I'll turn it around a bit so we can see it. So there's white dusting color there. And I'm going to put black over this side. I'll try and keep the two apart. That's why I've done it, because I normally separate them, you see. And so this is just black dusting colour. It doesn't matter what brand it is, as long as it's called black, that's fine. And then I'm going to put a bit of green on here as well. This colour here is called Moss Green, M-O-S-S -S, Green. So again, it doesn't really matter. And um, that's what I'm going to be using to paint. Now, before you get started with painting, I'm going to give you a little tip here, which you'll like, um, which is basically um, to give you a little bit of practice before you get going on your lollies. Because sometimes you've made these fantastic lollies and then you start painting them and you're a little bit like, oh, I'm not too sure what I'm doing. And you can then end up with a, uh, making a mess of them. So what I do, this is good this, is I take hold of a pen and I just do a very... Just do a basic line around my, very bad one, around my lollies. And I know then that's my surface area. So if I then want to practice, which I do, um, I can practice by painting straight onto a piece of paper, which is what I did earlier yesterday. So there's my practice from yesterday. And all I did, it doesn't matter that it doesn't behave quite the same way as it behaves on the lollies, but it gives me an opportunity to sort of plan things out. You can see here where I was going, yep, 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 that's all fine. I'll show you how to do the cobweb in a minute because I'm going to show you these two on the lollies. But it is a really good way of just practicing. You can't build up textures and layers and all these other things that cocoa butter does so beautifully once it's on sugar paste, but it does give you the option um, just to kind of do it um, before you actually go onto your lollies. So paintbrush wise, um, these are fairly small designs. So my brush is enabled 0, 1 and 2. I'm going to be using a combination of these this morning. Now, again, I've been painting this morning. I've been painting Christmas this morning. So I've got to just give them a little bit of a clean. So all I do to clean my brushes is I just dip them in the cocoa butter and I just twist them like so. So I dip 
and just twist the brushes to get any colour out that may or may not be in the brush. Now I could go to the sink and I could use hot soapy water and, and all these other bits and pieces but actually I just find this just as quick um, by just literally doing this. There you go, you see. This is where I play guessing games. You see I've painted something that's sort of a brownie creamy colour this morning. <laughs> What's that going to be for Christmas? Um, so there we go and then the last one here. So this is how I do it. When I finish my painting completely by all means, yep, off to the sink, give them a really good wash out at the end, hot soapy water, let them dry. When you leave your paintbrushes to dry, don't leave them standing down in your sink because then you end up with loads of problems um, and you want to end up with your paintbrushes drying upwards. So give them a clean and then leave them standing up that way, otherwise you're going to end up with your brushes causing um, loads of problems. I'm reading some of these comments, but my camera's up very high now because I've sat down. <laughs> so I'm doing my best to answer your questions. Right, okay, so those are the brushes I'm going to use. I'm just going to go through the cobweb with you just so you kind of get a bit of an idea because I'm not going to do that one. So this is just kind of my practice. So if I wanted to plan a design, then I could do something on here. I, I potentially wouldn't even need to probably paint it. I could just draw it with a pen, but I think it's just as nice just to start having a go with the brushes. It gives you a little bit of confidence as well. So all you do is you put your paintbrush into the cocoa butter, which is now liquid. Let me pull this forward a little bit so you can see it. There we go. Um, into there, pick up the black dusting colour and start mixing it. So the more cocoa butter, this product here, versus dusting colour, the thinner the paint. It's as straightforward as that. Um, you won't have anything more complicated than that. So if I start piling in loads of this, it's going to become a very thin paint, which means it's not going to cover particularly well. Um, so you want to have more dust at some point. Sometimes you don't. It just depends what you're doing. And again, that's what my lessons are all about, um, varying your consistencies and um, deciding exactly how you're going to do it there. So let's have a go at doing the cobweb. So this is the sort of thing we used to do in school, I think, isn't it? So if you want nice thin lines, make sure the top of your paintbrush faces the ceiling. If it's facing the wall, you get thick lines and we don't want that So for a cobweb. So make sure your paintbrush is facing the ceiling. And we're just going to do a very basic, remembering this is just a practice, it's on a piece of paper, we're not building up any layers, this is literally just a very basic plan of a lolly. Um, I would not, if you're doing any of the other lessons, I wouldn't recommend you do anything practised on paper, but this is just quite good just for lolly planning more than anything else. And then with a cobweb, it's just literally a case of just going round like so it's very straightforward so anyone who says they can't draw or they struggle with anything like this a cobweb's a lovely easy shape to do you won't find this too difficult and they're very effective and they're a nice activity that you can give the kids to do as well because they are lovely and easy and then we do another layer going round like so there we go so that's nice and straightforward isn't it and then you can do them on whatever colour lolly you want to. So you can do them on orange ones or green ones or whatever. Obviously, if you do them on black, you won't see them. So, yeah, try and resist doing them on anything too dark. There you go. That's easy. Nice, straightforward. Um, and then you should be able to find them. Uh, do it like that. Someone says they can't find the transfer sheets on my site. They're on um, cake supplies if you and they're on my website they're not on the sugar and crumbs site anybody's looking I'm just going to press this button anyone looking for transfer sheets you need to go to my website they're not on sugar and crumbs okay sugar and crumbs loads of chocolate get all your chocolate from them transfer sheets you need to go to my website and they are under cake supplies okay if you go in there you'll find lots of information on there so hopefully that answers that question Right, okay, so that's a plan. So if you felt that you wanted to do a bit of a plan, that is the way forward. Right, so here are my two lollies I did yesterday. And I'm going to show you two different designs. I'm going to show you a pumpkin and a spider. Again, not too complicated, nice and straightforward. And hopefully you'll just sit back and enjoy them. And there's no, as I say, that you don't have to think too hard about this. It is quite effective. So three colours, black, white, green. Doesn't really matter um, what colour green it is particularly. A dark green would be nice, but, you know, whatever it is you've got. 
So let's see where we are to make sure you can see everything. Okay, so let's start with the pumpkin. Now the pumpkin is made up of really simple shapes. I mean, you see lots of different pumpkins online and there's so many now, it's just amazing really. And I have to say, I have been um, known to carve the odd Scooby-Doo out, <laughs> out of a pumpkin. As my daughter is very heavily into Halloween. So I, I do like to do some of the different stuff, but let's stick with tradition at the moment and keep this nice and straightforward. And um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a triangle. Now that couldn't be easier, could it? So I'm just going to paint the triangle nice and straightforward. I'm just going to up the amount of dust that I need in here just to make sure it covers. So I'm going to paint another triangle here. There we go. How easy is that? So easy, so effective, so straightforward. I've already got my nice orange colour because that's the chocolate that I made earlier. And I'm going to now do another triangle. And there for his nose. Like that. And then his mouth. Just checking you can still see. I'm not painting over the top. No, nope, there we go. Now, the easiest way to start with his mouth is to think of the corners. So depending whether you want him to be a grumpy pumpkin or a smiley one, we'll go smiley. So we start at the top and all you do is go up and across in a little wiggly line like that. We'll go one more. It's got a very big smile going on this one. Like that. And then go to the bottom of it and then just copy straight underneath. We'll just go in between. And just join up the end like that and then take hold of your colour again and just fill it in so really straightforward like that now you can already see for anybody you can see on camera i'm gonna have a look in a minute to see if you can see it um that eye is already dry this eye is nearly dry it dries really quickly on chocolate so you won't have to wait long Okay. Remember what I said, you must remove them from the fridge before you start painting, otherwise as I say you won't find the cocoa butter, just won't sit on it properly. So that's our pumpkin face, not too scary, looking okay. And we're going to give him a little bit of green on the top, where his um, top of the pumpkin is. So again, I'll just take a little bit of green paint. So I've got my, this is brush number two. So a little bit thicker this brush than my other one and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to again make this very straightforward not nothing too complicated and I'm just going to just do a couple of sort of leaf shapes or three kind of leaf shapes at the top I haven't got the the top of the pumpkin but it gives you the rough idea with it anyway like so and then in order to make it really look like a pumpkin I'm going to do some lines down it so it would be like the sections of the pumpkin because at the moment he looks like a pumpkin but we can do better so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the black I'm going to grab a little bit of white and I'm just going to mix up a dark grey colour so I decided earlier that this would be better done in dark grey because then it doesn't overwhelm the whole thing because sometimes you find that if you do um, the black and then the black lines, it's too much. So let's just do a dark grey lines instead. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Now I've got brush number one on the go here. So this is one of my thinner brushes. And then all I'm going to do is take hold of my brush. I'm going to keep it upright and I'm just going to very carefully go around the edge of my lolly. Now also note what I'm doing is I am going to make some of these lines complete and some of them I'm going to sort of hatch them a little bit um, and that's why um, I think it looks better than it does to try and do the lines complete. I'm running out of paint, let's do that again. See if I talk too long sometimes the paint dries. So keep them really thin so that brush needs to be right up on the tip there and we're going to come down here avoiding the black on the way, curving it round. Don't forget, you don't just do straight lines going across. You have to follow the line of the pumpkin or the lolly, whichever way you're looking at it. And just paint towards whatever's there. Don't try and avoid anything, just go round it. Keep going. And there we go, like that. And one more, round here. 
It's a nice simple shape, this one. There you go. How easy is that? It's really, really easy and really, really effective. I'm going to hold that up so you can see that like that. So it's really, really good. Okay. So how easy is that? Didn't take me very long. Just some orange chocolate and I've done them very quickly. This one I did yesterday. So you can see them now. We've got two of them now. My children will be thrilled. Um, so that's the pumpkin lollies there. So nice and easy. Let's move on to the spider. So I'm just going to pop that down there. Let's have a go at doing a spider. Now we do a nice friendly spider. We're not doing any horrible spiders. We only have nice ones. Uh, happy, happy spider. So that's what we're going to do. So if anybody doesn't like spiders, you're going to be fine. I don't like spiders particularly. Having said that, if this was a snake, I would be out the door because I'm not keen on them. <laughs> and we all have our, our things and that's mine. Right, so very simple again. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the circle. It doesn't have to be that round either. That's good, isn't it? I'm just going to fill it in. see okay yeah you can are you loving my my pumpkin uh, <laughs> they're good aren't they they're so effective and so easy and straightforward so that's our center of our spider i think i'm quite happy with that do i want to make it any bigger i don't think i do because i'm not going to be able to get anything on i'll go a tiny bit bigger there we go i mean you could have a field day with this you could make little mini baby ones and all sorts you really could have fun with this We'll make him a little bit bigger. And there we go. See how quickly it's drying already. You can see because it goes from being sort of matte to shiny. So if you kind of look in the middle of it, you can see already that it's starting to set. It's very, very quick. See, the pumpkin's all set now. See, and if I touch it, it won't come off. If I start rubbing it, it will come off, but it's now absolutely fine. So there you go. Right, so let's, we're going to switch brushes now. We're going to go to the zero brush. And we're going to do some little hairs coming out of the pump, out of the, I was going to say coming out of the pumpkins, coming out of the spider. So much thinner brush now. And again, all I'm going to do is hold my brush up. I'm just going to go around the whole thing. It's going to be a fluffy spider, you see, a friendly fluffy spider. I'm being, I'm, <laughs> I'm choosing my words because I know some people don't like them, but he will be cute. Don't worry. He will be a lovely spider. Okay. And go round like that. Okay. Nearly there. There he goes. So lovely thin lines, all achieved by making sure your paintbrush is upright. Make sure this point is facing the ceiling. If it's facing the wall, you're going to get much thicker lines, okay? So just be careful. Right, now, next thing, we're going to do the legs. I think we'll stick with this brush, actually, for the moment. So he's got eight legs. That's the theory. So we'll start in the middle, and all we're going to do is we're going to put a leg like that. So we're going to come out at an angle and down like so. And then we're going to go the other side so that we've got roughly... There we go, so that's two. doesn't matter if they're slightly different lengths either because don't forget the spider could be sort of hanging at different angles, so that's okay. Um, now, the next one, we're going to end with the legs approximately here. So the legs aren't all the way around here because this spider is hanging from the ceiling. So I'm going to actually just put a line in there now just to remind ourselves that we're not going any higher. So we're looking at this spider um, this way. So we're going to put in the next one here. So we're going to come out. And then we're going to just turn it back a little bit like that for this one. And the next one, same, like so. And then this one here, out and round, like so. Okay, and then we'll do the other side. Again, I've got them curving out a little bit. So those middle ones were quite straight. The rest of the legs do have a little bit of a a little sort of curve about them and then this one here out and round like so okay there we go see that's fairly straightforward 
Now I'm going to give the spider some eyes and a mouth. Now, in theory, let's have a look, it's dry. Um, I possibly would have put this in the fridge again at this point just to chill it down, but we're gonna, we're gonna continue and hope it's okay. I'm just gonna clean my brush just to get some of the black out of it. So I've got brush, what have I got here? Brush one. So it's because it's um, quite small painting, um, I have got small brushes. Uh, you can't do this with great big chunky brushes, it doesn't work. You just, just need some little fine brushes for this. So let's turn this around. Uh, we're going to just mix up some white. White can be a bit of a pain to mix. It's always thicker than everything else. Um, just pick it up and just almost sort of dab it um, I think it's just the makeup of what it is. It just can be a little bit like this. So just be careful. I want to make it really thick because we're going to try and do the eyes. I'm hoping that the black paint is dried enough for me to do that. If not, I've got one I did earlier. So you can always have a look anyway. So mix yourself up some white paint with predominantly dusting colour. Okay. Hopefully that should be okay. And then we'll go down to the eyes here and all I'm going to do is just dab, dab a little eye in there and we'll put another one in there. So it's almost dry, it's showing through a little bit but what we can do is we can let this dry and then we can go back and make these even whiter. Build our layers. Okay, and we're going to give them a smile as well. We have to have a smiley spider. And we're just going to we'll just mark a smile on. He can be as smiley or as unhappy as you want him to be. You can do whatever you like. I quite like him. <laughs> I'm having a little laugh at myself here. Okay. I'm just going to again just fill the eyes in a bit further. So I'm just dabbing this in. I don't need to paint, I can just dab this colour on. You can see them getting whiter and whiter now. And now while that's drying, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a little cobweb up here. So we had a little practice earlier. So now we can do our cobweb at the top of the um, where the spider's hanging. So we can do a line like this and another line like this. So remember, we've had a practice on this. So we're good at this. We know that this is going to be easy peasy for us. We're just doing a little bit of cobweb. So we're going to come across like that. Like that. Okay, that's that one and then the same again see it was worth having that bit of practice now wasn't it let's make that a little bit longer there we go like that so you can tell a bit of a story with this can't you? you can get a bit carried away and then you can pop into the middle of the eyes this should now be dry a little bit of black again I've done this with a very small paintbrush just popped a little bit of an eye in the middle there just to bring him to life He's smiling away. Look at that, you see. <laughs> and there's my... He sees a super cute spider. That's not scary at all, is it? You see, look at those two like that, side by side. So these are your hand-painted coloured versions of doing um, Halloween with cocoa butter. So it does dry very, very quickly and it's such a lovely activity. So you could paint on the reverse side of the transfer sheet ones if you wanted to, or you can just put more transfer sheets on there if that's what you want to do. But that's what they look like. They are very cute. I did another spider earlier you go this is the one I did earlier so you see they look quite similar they are fun and look all it was was just a, a circle of black paint some little hairs which you just do with a paintbrush eight legs and we did a little cobweb practice didn't we so we knew how to do our cobwebs let it all dry and then you can pop your white eyes on over the top like that and you've got yourself something completely different then something that you can do easily at home with no problem at all they're very very straightforward um, and you can do them like that so I'm going to put those there like this now let's get the ones out of the fridge those are the ones we're waiting for aren't we with the transfer sheet so let me turn around and get those I'll also oops I'll also get the plain ones out as well that was less drastic than it sounded it was just hitting my chair leg so the acetate ones that we had earlier literally they are just a case of turning them over like that 
leaving them to become room temperature very important okay there must be room temperature before you start painting otherwise when you go to paint you'll find the cocoa butter will set instantly and it won't give you any opportunity to actually do any painting so bear in mind if you want to do painted ones you'll then need to give them not long about half an hour or so to come back to room temperature and then these are the halloween ones shut my fridge door I think we've got to do everything we can to kind of brighten our lives at the moment and I think that you know we're not going to be trick-or-treating this year but we can do some lovely activities at home and I think all of these are really great ideas to be able to do this so these are now set onto the transfer sheets and all I'm going to do is simply peel them up and it prints the pattern straight onto the lollipop so I'll pop that one there I'll do that one again okay so that's what it does. I hold that up so you can see it. That's funny spiders, apparently. <laughs> oh, they made me laugh anyway. That's just my sense of humour. Um, you can see you've got gaps left over here where the print hasn't been taken up. You can turn that over and then you could use this side to do your plain one. So you can use the reverse side of the transfer sheet to do the plain lollies. So if you are in searching for plain acetate, you can just use the back of these. So don't throw these bits away because you can use them. Um, you can also make little mini lollies here as well, or you could make little discs that then could go on these. So you don't waste a lot of this. And then this one is funny pumpkins. There you go. <laughs> well they're making me laugh anyway so these are funny pumpkins and you can see that they just peel off they're really really easy and straightforward to do um i'm reading the comment about i hope you have lots in stock do you know what i don't i don't have a huge amount of these they are limited availability and i mean that because i can't get any more now they are running they're going to be running out so if you are interested in doing any of this halloween stuff do go to my website and have a look um, and have a go at the colouring as well. If you think about the different colours that might look really nice behind this. If you don't want to colour your chocolate and you want to just do it in, say, milk chocolate would stand out really nicely with this or white. Um, certainly with the spiders, you would need a white chocolate. Otherwise, they would disappear um, and you wouldn't be able to see them. Um, Sugar and Crumbs don't have the transfers, no. They are on my website, which I'm going to be putting up in just a second. Um, they do have the chocolate, so if you want to go and purchase chocolate, then that's on Sugar and Crumbs. But these transfer sheets you will find on my website. I've just put the address up now if anybody's wanting to go and have a look. Go into Cake Supplies when you get on there. And you'll also find um, all the online cake painting is in there as well. So if you fancy having a go at the little... I've got a little Halloween shop going on here now haven't I? I'm going to put my little I'm going to have a whole selection going on here now so I've got my little my little Halloween I can take a picture of this at the end look I'm getting carried away now so I could put that there lots of Halloween ideas around there I've got some other things to show you as we approach Halloween as well so lots of other different ideas but there you go well happy Halloween everybody <laughs> we haven't got there yet it's not october yet um but there you go you can kind of see a, a, a nice display of things that you can make and you can really have fun with this and as i say don't forget you can practice you can use a sheet of paper and a pen if you want to or just use some um let me take this down again so you can't get confused you can use just a, a pen if you want to map something out but i reckon it's quite good to have a go with a paintbrush because it gets you to start feeling what consistencies are like so there's a lovely array of things there that you can make and do for halloween so there you go i'm feeling like i've given you lots of inspiration i hope anyway <laughs> right Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this morning's demonstration. Uh, my name is Tracy Mann. I am on the Sugar and Crumbs page, clearly, um, doing a demonstration. But um, if you do want to purchase anything like the online um, cake paint in terms of the little teddy or the transfer sheets, then you do need to go to my website. If you want to purchase chocolate, then that is all on Sugar and Crumbs. You will find it all on there. So do go and have a look. And as I say, you will be able to watch this back. I've noticed someone says that they've missed the beginning. Don't worry, you can go back and watch this. It will be on the Sugar and Crumbs page. It will also be on my page as well if anybody wants to go across and, and keep up to date with what's going on. Um, I'm always on here doing lots of demonstrations, hopefully to inspire you as well. Or oh, don't forget as well, the dusting colours. So um, dusting colours again on Sugar and Crumbs. Um, and there's a few on my page as well. I don't stop as many as Carol. She's got loads. Um, but pick your colours, remembering that if you do 
change the color of chocolate that you are starting on a yellow base you're not starting on a white base that's so really really important that you think about this before you're disappointed because if you then pour a color in and it doesn't turn out like you expected you're going to be disappointed so um, think carefully about what happens with that um, when you are mixing colors through so strong colors more easy to achieve than perhaps pastel colors they can be a bit more tricky and over the next few weeks i will cover things like color mill i will have a look at those for you and do some different backings as well we'll use the transfer sheets against them so we can see the color changes there and you can see the sort of things that you can do um so if you need any further information there is my website if you're if you'd like to see what I normally demonstrate before I come live, then do please go to the Sugar and Crumbs, or oh, not Sugar and Crumbs, we're on Sugar and Crumbs, go to my Instagram page. Because normally on Instagram, on the morning before, if I'm organised, um, I normally put up a picture of what I'm going to demonstrate. And then it gives you an opportunity to then remember to tune in. Um, don't forget to like and share this um, page as well. It's great for everybody to... Um, to like and share it there's my facebook page as well if you want to go across there and have a look at all my different things on there you're going to find online classes transfer sheets and lots of cupcake bouquets because i happen to be quite obsessed with them <laughs> i do like the cupcake bouquets but carol is the lady with the cupcake bouquets and if you want to learn how to do those then you need to sign up for carol's classes because she's really really good at teaching everybody how to do that and using all of her amazing icing sugars as well so i hope you've had a lovely morning i will post a picture of my halloween um, display that i've created during the live onto my instagram page now any questions do please let me know more than happy to help you i hope you all have a fantastic day and I will be back again next week and uh, take care and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now!